here with you. We know that you're all at home. I hope none of you have cabin fever. Of course, I was watching yesterday on TV how to build a cabin so I can get cabin fever. But uh, we're glad you're viewing with us, and we pray that you'll be with us throughout this time. We're going to just want to remind you that we still are planning, uh, if the Lord opens up the door for us to on May 1st and May 2nd, our camp meeting, 7.30 on that Friday, 10.30 on that Saturday. We'd love to have you come, and maybe you want to get out because of all of this coronavirus thing. Uh, God has ways of doing things that he could send a wind and blow it completely away. And so we just praise God for that. Uh, we're going to go to prayer, and then Pastor Kenny and, and Kinsey are going to share a song with us, and then I'm going to come back and share with you a message that I feel is very timely for this era that we're in. For those of you that might not know who I am, my name is Dale Ridgely, and I, uh, I kind of assist here at this church at Faith in Action, 1640 East Grand, and uh, we welcome you. For those of you that do know me, don't shut it off, please. Just continue on with what you're doing. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, we have a number of requests that have been given to us, uh, some of these, and if you have a need, just believe with us as we pray at this time. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your goodness to us. This opportunity to gather even in our homes yes. lord god though we might not be together as a congregation we are a congregation of heart and in your presence lord we pray for dorothy today that you would touch her this this pain in her side lord that you would just minister to her and touch her and let her feel your healing yes. virtues right we pray for miss winston's father lord god yes. who's, who's contracted this this virus lord yes. we pray that your hand would rest Heals upon him let that faith and confidence would go into their lives, Lord God, that you are the healer. In the name of you Jesus. are the restorer. Yes. We pray for the many that are around the nation who so are sick, sick with this virus. Those who are, who are quarantined because In though the they do not have Jesus. all the symptoms, they carry this virus. Yes. We ask right now that you touch them and minister to them. Yes. We pray for Star spreading. and Nick at the decisions that they have to make yes. on Everest, Lord God, that you would continue to move you there and touch the there. You can keep those that have to travel Jesus. back and forth, Lord God, for our truck drivers, yes. for our those EMTs, the, for our police working. officers, our fire yes. department, Lord God, our, our, our nurses and our, our doctors, our aides, and all of Thank those, Lord Jesus. God, who, who are giving of their time, yes. those who come out of retirement. Thank you, Mike. That you would minister to them, Lord God. Yes. We pray for New York, Lord God. We pray for California. We pray for Illinois. We pray for yes, Washington Lord, all around and Louisiana country, right now, Lord God. Lord God. Is there an epicenter, Lord God? And we just pray that your hand, that people would cry out to you. Or as we read in the Judges, Lord God, it says that when the people cried out, though they walked not in your yes. will, that you heard them. Lord, your word in says in Psalm 5, early in the morning will I bring my request to you. And I will give my Thank voice you. unto you. Thank and I will wait expectantly, Lord God, to hear an answer. So we ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. 
praise you this morning. We want to raise every hallelujah we can. For truly, this is a time of growing together and not combating one another. For us to realize that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And so we raise our hallelujah. We sing it louder and louder. Yes, but we I too did. will rise out of the ashes. Thank we too Jesus. will praise our King louder and louder. Thank Lord, you. Lord, we love you this morning. Lord, we thank you for those that are viewing. We pray, Lord God, that in some way this message will touch a heart. Yes. Lord. There are many out there today, Lord God, that are making decisions and they're wondering what's happening. And Lord God, there are some that are separated from their families because of this illness and this disease. We pray that this nation would rise up and recognize you as the King yes. of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In the name of Jesus. We pray that we would rise up and not be afraid or be ashamed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. For our lives, Lord God, lay in your hands. This should show us evermore that life is great. Lord God, that we should be ready at any moment. Yes. For a Thank crisis you. can happen, but also for a revelation. A revelation that will bring us to a greater and mightier power. A revelation that will give us a greater understanding of your love and your desire. Yes. Lord, you might not have caused this, but you are in the midst of this, Lord God. You are in the midst of this, and we will allow you. So we praise you, we thank you, and we worship you, and we give you the praise as we sing Hallelujah under your name. church and God has promised to give yes. us an outpouring of his spirit. Amen. There was a message of tongues and that was an interpretation as to the come unto him. Thank you. Lord. Really Thank exciting you. because it goes right along with what God is trying to say through his word. Thank You've you. never been a part of a church that operates in the gifts of the Holy Spirit which were promised in the book of Acts. Were promised by Joel in, in Joel chapter 2 that you've experienced today and maybe it touched your heart. Thank you. For those of you that know about it, you should be prepared and be praying. For those that you didn't, don't understand how that works, all you have to do is ask God to reveal it to you. Thank but there's you. one thing that was said during this time. Come unto Him. Yes. Come unto Him. Life is precious. And so we need to realize that God is calling and calling many of Thank us. You. And I pray that by the end of this service that you'll see what's required of you. What's required of you to come unto him. Thank you. Jesus. And that you'll understand it. Thank you, Kenzie and Pastor Kenny, for that wonderful song. I love that song. Uh, my wife uh, found that song a long time ago when we started singing it. And uh, it just touches my heart every time. I just wish I could sing in the same manner. Uh, Amen. Praise God. <laughs> you know, praise God. If you have your Bibles, and if you're at home, maybe you'll want to take, if you have children that don't normally sit in the service, and you'll want to read this portion of Scripture in Judges chapter 2 uh, about, about what's taking place. And this is talking about a generation of fools. A generation of fools. And so in, in Judges chapter 2, starting at verse 7, reading through verse 11. It says, and the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua 
who had seen all the great works of the Lord, and he that he did for Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. And they buried him in the border of the inheritance of Timnathah, in the mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill of Gaash, excuse me. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. And there arose, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done in Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served Balaam. I want to go back to that portion of scripture in verse 10 that says, there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done in Israel. We live in a time today when many people do not acknowledge God. In fact, they say many times that if you are a, a follower of God, you are weak because you are depending upon something you can't see, you can't feel, and you can't know. Here Joshua had died. Joshua had led them into the promised land. He was the servant of the Lord, but he was also the under-shepherd of Moses. And he learned how to climb the mountain. He learned how to get into the presence of God. He was a great warrior. He was a great leader. And it says here that all the generation that was with him died off. And that's what we're seeing in the church today. We see many of the generation that preceded us that believed in the full power of God are dying off. And there's not a generation to refill those gaps because we have a problem with wanting to serve Balaam. We want to serve Baal. We want to serve ourselves. You see, too often, when you take God out of the picture, the only one that's there is you. And so you want to serve yourself. Joshua being dead and all the works had stopped. The mighty works of miracles were no longer talked about. They had no longer been seen. We see that the physical symbol of God had now been taken away. And many times because people can't see God, because they can't understand God, they say there is no God. The Bible is very plain and explicit. It says that if you say there is no God, you are a fool. So I would say that this generation is foolish. Foolish. When we lose sight of a personal God, we start looking and making lesser things our gods. For example, Jesus said that he was the way, the truth, the life. That no one could come to the Father but through him. And yet every day when we draw close to death, we want to make sure we're going to go to heaven. And yet it says if unless you come through Jesus Christ, you cannot get to heaven. What are some of the gods that we have made in our lives? Some of them today are money. If we, we work for the money, for our money is our God. Some people make prestige their God. I want to be somebody. I want somebody to take notice of me. Me, 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 me. Instead of looking at the I am, we look at the me, me. Come on. We seek after knowledge. We have more people going to college than we've ever had in our entire lifetime. And they're becoming out dumber and dumber every day. Because they've learned that there is no God according to the professors and educators of our daytime. Man. There's nothing wrong with knowledge and wisdom, but it must be sought through the Lord. Yeah. We start making lesser gods of seeking ways to satisfy our flesh through drugs or sex or anything else that you can put before God. And I'm telling you the truth. Today we have everybody making a God out of something. Whether it's a new house or a new car, a new job. We're looking for some new excitement. When the real excitement is knowing that you're going to heaven. But there was a generation that knew not God. We have a generation today that knows not God. That's right. Amen. 
When I was growing up in the 60s and the 70s, and I, I tell people all the time, I feel that I grew up in the greatest era of all in the 60s. It was still a time when you could leave your house door open without locking it because there was no threat of someone coming and breaking in. Kids could stay out and play on the streets. And God saw that the family unit was so important that he brought a revival in the 60s called the Jesus Freaks. And these were people who were sold out to Jesus Christ. They found a relationship. We only want to hear of the 60s and the 70s and the early 80s and the times of drugs. But there was a revival of young people going on. And we need a generation of young people to have a revival once again. Amen. To see the miracle right. and the power of God. Yes. Amen. I've been blessed to be on the evangelistic field. And I've been blessed to see people literally healed. Then people brought back to, to, to understanding by those that were deaf are now hearing. Those that were lame that are now walking. Glory. God has not quit, but we have quit God. Come on. We've become a generation, and we have pastors standing in the pulpit today, and I mean not to bash anyone, but we have pastors standing in the pulpit today that have no personal relationship and want nothing from God except a paycheck. I'm sorry. Truth is the truth. Come on. I hunger for revival. I want to see a generation drawn up to become alive in God. Yes. Many will not acknowledge a personal God. Look at verse 19 of chapter 2 with me, please. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned to the corrupt, returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to to to, to what? To bow down unto them. They cease not from their own doing, nor from their stubborn way. If you're a Bible marker, mark that stubborn way. We live in a stubborn generation today. We live in a generation that's all about me. We stop serving God because of me. What do I want? I don't want to go through it. I'll serve God as long as I don't have to go through a hardship, Dale. I'll serve God as long as the money's still on the table. I'll serve God as long as I have health. I'll serve God as long as I don't have to make a tough decision. And we have no one standing in the pulpits today. I'm not mean by, by when I use the word no one, I'm talking about very few standing in the pulpit and preaching that Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. The only way to heaven. Yes, he is. <clears throat> if you're a Muslim, a Buddhist, you're good people. We know that. Whether you're of a denomination that doesn't believe in Jesus Christ, you're good people. But you're being led astray because you do not understand the power of the judge. The true judge that serves out. The word of God says that all men and all women will be judged one day or another. Christians will be judged at a beam of seat for what they did as Christians. But those that are judged at the great right throne will be judged only by their faults and failures to acknowledge that there's a God. God is seeking a people who want him, need him, and will serve him. Let me say that again. God is seeking a people who want him, need him, and will serve him. Amen. Over in Jeremiah chapter 4, I want to give you understanding of this because I found this as I was preparing this message and it, it hit my heart so strong that I want to share it with you. Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, please. I'll give you a moment to turn. Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, and maybe we'll go into 5. Let's see. For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and sow not among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord, and take away the foreskin of your heart, ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Lest my fury come forth like fire, 
and burn that none can quench because of the evil of your doing. Declare ye in Judah and publish in Jerusalem and say, Blow ye the trumpet in the land. Cry, gather together and say, Assemble yourselves and let us go into the defense cities. What he's saying there is that it's time to break up that which is in your heart. You've made your heart hard because you will not allow God to penetrate your heart. Yes. Yes. You will not accept. You will not break your stubbornness that talked, was talked about in Judges 2.19. I know what it means to be stubborn. I've been stubborn all my life. And if we read in the Word that stubbornness is the same as witchcraft, which means that I serve a lesser God. Stubbornness is a time when we're unwilling to be educated in the ways of life. Earlier I said that, that God was a, a God who is seeking people who want him. God will not push himself on you. That's right. God will not walk up to you and slap you directly. <clears throat> but he wants you to want him. He's a jealous God. He created you. There's nothing created that wasn't created by the Lord. Amen. All things were created by the Lord. Whether you like it or not, whether he used your parents, your father and your mother to create you, his hand was in that portion of creation. And he wants all creation to rise up and praise him. Why? Because he's a good God. Oh, Dale, I don't believe that. You see all the sickness, all this disease? Well, we have never realized that all this sickness, all this disease is either to do one or two things. To get your attention or to understand his power. And so it's time come on. that we come to him. Jeremiah says, break up the fallen ground of your heart. Quit, take that seared heart, that hardness that says there's no, well, if that's God, I don't want to serve him. That's not an attitude of surrender. That's an attitude of stubbornness. We need to stand fast. We as Christians need to start rising up and quit being ashamed. I thought it's amazing that our nation has been challenged to rise up and declare freedom from this coronavirus at Easter. That our president would love to see in the next two weeks where we would rise up from this death warrant that has taken over our nation and the nation of other nations. And yet we are unwilling to acknowledge that Jesus Christ died for you and me, went to the grave, and rose in three days. Yes. Mankind was changed in a three-day period. Yeah. All life was changed in a three-day period. Glory. And all it takes is by believing and receiving. Thank you, Lord. When you look at Judges chapter 5 and verse 2, it gives us a little further understanding of what's taking place here. Let me turn there quickly, please. Judges chapter 5, verse 2. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel when the people willingly offered themselves. True praise comes when you're willing to give him the glory. When you're willing to yeah. give him opportunity to move in your life. We must first acknowledge that there is a God. Not some stone idol somewhere. Not some short-term fix to get us out of trouble. Not some vow that we would make. And if you read on in the, in the book of Judges, you'll see that there's a, a man there by the name of Japheth. And Japheth was the son of a harlot of the tribe of Ephraim. And his brothers threw him out until disaster started to come upon him. And then they wanted him to lead and he said, you didn't want me, but now you want me to lead you. You see, he knew that he could lead them. 
but they were looking for a short-term fix. In fact, he made a foolish vow in, 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 in his going to war. He said, the first thing that walks out of the doors of my house, I will offer as a burnt offering unto the Lord. See, there are many people, when they're short-sightedness, they'll make all kinds of vows to God. I'll serve you all the days of my life. You get me out of this trouble. And once the trouble's gone, so are they. I'll go to church every Sunday, Dale, if God would just heal me. When the healing takes place, they go away. Wow. You see, God's not looking for a short-term relationship. That's right. He's not a one-stand, one-night stand God. He's a God that wants a relationship and wants us to come unto him. You see, the fact is. He wants to come into your life and live with you every day. Every day. Well, Dad, I tried that, but I failed and I messed up. I have hope for you today. Yeah. Our God is not a God that wants us to walk in shame or guilt. Amen. That's right. But it takes a confession of your mouth to be saved. Amen. You take a moment and turn with me to Psalm 130, please. Psalm 130 speaks volumes, and I, there are eight verses there, but they're very important verses. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be sensitive to the voice of my supplication. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? Well, stop right there. Put your finger up there. See, no one in this world, no one in this world can stand before a just God without Jesus standing before them. That's right. If God were to mark iniquities, no one would be left. But when you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you accept the sacrifice of Jesus, all the iniquities, all the sins, all of the sicknesses that you've ever done in a worldly fashion are forgiven. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Come on. Are forgiven. No one can, stood, can stand before a God if our iniquities were all constantly before us. But that's the exciting thing about being a Christian and understanding and being a generation that will rise up and say, I'm going to go with God instead of with my own personal vendetta. Thank you, Lord. Verse 4 says, But there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what any of you have done. There are people out there right now, young women who made mistakes and got pregnant, had an abortion. I want you to know that God can forgive you. Yes, amen. Yes. I want those who have been in an adulterous situation that maybe your marriage has completely gone awry and, and you're no longer married. I want you to know that God, through forgiveness and through, through restoration, can make you whole again. Amen. Yes. yes. Those of you that were so caught in drugs that you didn't know what was up, and many times you faced the door of death and were brought back. I want you to know there's forgiveness. Amen. 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 But that forgiveness only comes by following the Lord. Amen. Yes. It doesn't matter what people think of you. It's what does Jesus think of you. Amen. That's right. You see... He goes and he says here, but there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. Well, Dale, why do I have to fear, the, fear God? It's not that type of fear. It's understanding that when you're forgiven, when you're forgiven, what a joy that a God of the universe looks down upon me, a man of failure, and looks at me and says, if you acknowledge me, I'm going to love you. Come on. I'm going to love you. What kind of God? I should fear a God that can take my sins and my iniquities away and bring me into a life of peace and assurance that one day, one day I mark it. The older I get, I mark that those days are coming sooner. I'm going to pass away. 
that I'll not pass away into a death and darkness. I will pass away into a life everlasting of joy and peace. Amen. And I will come unto the Lord. Come on. Thank you, Lord. I will wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait. And in his word, I do hope. Do you have hope today? Or are you of the generation of lostness? Do you have hope today? My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. Wow. Wow. I say more than they that watch for the morning. People are always looking and saying there's more. There. When you, if, you, if you're sick on a sick bed, you know that in the morning you always feel better. The night tries to steal your life. The morning tries to give you life. Glory. And it says that my soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. My soul. My soul. Let Israel hope, it says, in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. Again, I don't know what your sins are. You don't have to confess your sins to me. You don't have to go to a priest and confess your sins. You just have to go to the Lord, which is the ultimate high priest of all mankind. Yes. And by confession of your mouth, 1 John 1, 9 says, if you, are, if you will confess your sins, he will forgive your sins. Amen. He'll forgive them. He'll blot them out. Yes. Well, but wait, Dale, I tried that and I became a Christian for a short period of time, but I kept going over this guilt and guilt and guilt. That's not God. That's the enemy trying to bring back something that's past, that's yeah. dead. Come on. Amen. The enemy only brings back the things that are dead. He has nothing to bring back that is alive. That's right. Amen. Come on. So if you're dwelling in the death of what you were, you're not living in the life that you can be. And you need to turn to a God and say, God, I wait for you in the morning. In the morning. Lord. Let Israel hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. And with him is plenteous redemption. Look at that word, plenteous redemption. There's nothing too hard for God to forgive. Amen. Nothing. Amen. And he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Yes. That word Israel means chosen people. Yes. Chosen people. The word of God says that when you become a Christian, when you confess Jesus Christ, you are a chosen people. A royal priesthood. A chosen people. A peculiar people. Thank you, Lord. A generation of people. That he will one day summon his home. Amen. That Psalm 1, when you're feeling down, you need to underline Psalm 130. You need to write it in the front of your Bible. I'm one of these who that I write a lot of things in my Bible because there are times when I need to call things back to remembrance. Yes. This week, I have called this prayer. It's found in Psalm 5. Because it means so much to me. The King James says it a little bit differently than, than the NIV. But it's a very important verse. It says, Gear, give ear unto my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. Verse 2, hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King, and my God, for unto thee I will pray. The voice shalt thou hear in the morning. This is the verse I put to heart. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning. I've got to start my day with giving my voice to the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer. Now look at Psalm 130. It said what? In the morning, he will bring me joy. In the morning. Unto thee will I look up. Now, that latter part in the NIV, I love it because it says, and I will wait upon my requests. I will wait to hear back from you, God. I'll not make a move without you, God. 
My prayer I offer in the morning. My God of redemption. My God of hope. And while I'm doing that, Lord, I'm going to wait until I get an answer from you. Thank you, Lord. Too often we run off without hearing the answer. Okay, Dale. I'm trying to make a point. But I've tried this religious thing. I've tried this church thing. Yeah, that's the problem. You tried the religion, you tried the church, but you didn't try Jesus. Come on. Well, wait a minute. What does he want from me? What do I have to do to be saved? What do I have to do to really have that personal relationship? Dale, do you never go through a time of doubt? Doubt is normal, but faith overcomes doubt. Yes. I don't live by what I know. I live by what the word tells me. And yes, there will be doubt. The word of God is filled with it. Peter got out of the boat by faith, but doubt filled in and he began to sink. But the neat thing about sinking is there was a hand of Jesus there to raise him back up. Come on. Thank you, Lord. The way to stay away from doubt is to seek him every morning. Amen. Yes. Maybe you're out there and you've never made a decision for Jesus Christ. And you say, what's this going to cost me? Well, it didn't cost you anything. It's totally free. It cost Jesus everything. It cost him the cross. Yes. And until you're willing to acknowledge that Jesus Christ died for your sins, until you're willing to confess him as your Lord and Savior, until you're willing to walk the path that he presents before you, you're never going to make it. You'll be a generation lost, just like the generation in the book of Judges. You see, there's a simple verse in the Old Testament that I've really come to rely on. It's found in Micah 6. It says, the Lord only requires us to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before thy God. Yeah. That's 6 8. Let me say that again. You want to be a Christian? You want to know how to walk with God? Here's what you got to do. First of all, that you want to do justly, which means that you want to justify through Jesus Christ. The word justify means just as if I never sinned. To walk justly. To walk justly before all men. To walk justly before your God. To walk justly before your wife or your children. To walk justly on your job. And as you walk justly, you better understand that you've got to have, be able to love mercy. Instead of holding guilt over someone's head, you must forget the guilt and walk in mercy. Praise the Lord. For his mercy you, Lord. is new every morning. The seat that God sits upon is called the mercy seat. The mercy seat. God wants to extend to you mercy day in and day out. And finally, to walk humbly before thy God. Without your God, you are nothing. Amen. We're not to walk around carrying a big pride saying, look at me, I'm a Christian. But we're to walk humbly, stretching our hand out to the lepers of the world. Yes. To the sick of our nation. To the jailed who are imprisoned. To those that are ready to lose to give them life. To do justly. To love mercy. And to walk humbly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Threefold cord is not quickly broken. And if you'll learn to do justly, that means when you're on the job, just because your boss tells you something you don't like, you have to think, I will justly do this because of the Lord. Yes. Yes. When your wife or your husband has aggravated you to no end, that you have to say, wait a minute, I need to show mercy. When your neighbor's dog tears up your garbage and strews it all over you, you walk in mercy. When someone wants to pat you on the back and you know who you really are, you're humble about it instead of arrogant about it. You see, humility means that you're willing to serve. You're willing to serve. 
Jesus showed us that when he took the disciples before his crucifixion and he took them into an upper room and he washed their feet. Yes. He served. Humbly. To be humble. There's a lot of false humility today. We're telling people, oh, don't say that nice thing about me. And on the other hand, we're saying, come on, I need more. I need more. I need more. But real humility is doing things that nobody sees. Real humility is doing things that nobody sees and not looking for any credit for it. Amen. Jesus humbly went to the cross. Didn't need the accolades of man or woman or beast. Yes. He went there for his father. In my time of devotion this morning, I was thinking of all the people who have major decisions to make. Some of them are life and death. It's never easy. But I think we need to practice what Jesus did when he went to the garden. Father, let this cup pass by me, but if it be thy will, there's some things in life we want to blame God for that actually are better off for what he did than the way we had planned or wanted it to happen. You see, when you accept Jesus as your Savior and make him your God, you will have the hope of the Holy Spirit to help you. To do what? To be just, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. It's not a hard life to walk in Christ. It's a dedicated life. To do what? To do justly. To love mercy. And to walk home. Amen. You can't do it alone. You can't be a Christian alone. It amazes me that some of you are there out there that watch our program every week, and yet you won't get into a church that wants that needs you to show justice, mercy, and humility. He's not coming after Dale Ridgely. He's coming after his church. Yes. And Dale Ridgely is a part of his church. Yes. You need to read the word of God to understand what justice is. To understand how to love in mercy. And how to walk humbly. You need to be gathered around a group of people who want justice who love mercy, and who walk humbly. If you're not in a church, or if you're in a church that doesn't show justice for all, who doesn't show mercy for all, and who doesn't walk humbly, thinking they're too good for everyone else, then you need to find another church. I can say that. Thank you, Lord. Because I know what it's like to be told not to come back to a church. I don't need anyone feeling sorry for me, but I'm telling you, the churches need to rise up today and accept anybody who walks through that door. Yes. Changed or unchanged, that every time they walk through that door, come they're on. one more step closer to change. Yes. Amen. That the Holy Spirit is so strong in your church that they overcome the drug habit that they have. Amen. They overcome the perversion that they live under. They come over the self-love that they have committed themselves to. The first and more foremost thing that we need to do is make a commitment to identify ourselves unashamedly that we are in Jesus Christ. Jesus is looking for a bride. Pastor Kenny shared a great message last week. He's looking for the bride of Christ, his bride. Yes. A bride that will be arrayed in justice, mercy, and humility. A bride that's not afraid to say, I'm looking for my husband. I'm looking for my husband. I want to be a part of the marriage. I want to be a part 
of the celebration of heaven. Glory. If you're viewing us today and you've never made a decision for Christ or you're walking in a weakness, you're sick and afflicted, I'm here to tell you this morning that my God heals, whether it's through Facebook, in a congregation, or a one-on-one -on -one prayer. My God heals. Yes. My God restores. Yes. My God saves. But you got to be bold and you got to be unashamed of the decision you make today. Amen. And so though you cannot walk our altar and come down for us to pray for you, once we do pray and you confess with your mouth that you're a sinner or that you have a need, you need to confess that to someone else. You need to unashamedly tell someone else because that solidifies and that strengthens your commitment. And you're saying you can judge me any way you want to, but I'm sold out to Jesus Christ. Because I'm a part of a generation that accepts the miracle-working God who changed my life. Yes. That has opened doors for me to fellowship with like believers. Not to push away the lost, but to draw them by the appearance and aroma of the fragrance that you will wear as a, as a, as a, as a saved to a Savior. Thank you. Pray with me. Repeat this prayer after me. Repeat it from your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I acknowledge you today as my Savior. I confess my sins, each and every one of them, that the blood that you shed on Calvary would cover my sins. That you would allow the Holy Spirit to come into my life, that I would not sin any longer. But that if I do make a mistake and I trip, that I will righteously know that I will seek you every day for you will not mark me with my iniquity as I confess my sins to you. That I desire the Holy Spirit to fill my life as it showed in the, the book of Acts that I will be open to bear forth the fruit and the gifts that have been presented for me to show the power that has been mixed by faith in the word of God. Today I declare my freedom as a Christian, that I'm a part of a generation that will raise up a voice unashamedly that I am a Christian and I desire to walk in Christ daily. You do not have to wear a banner. You do not have to walk in a certain manner, but I had to walk justly, filled with mercy, and humbly before my God. I accept that requirement today. I confess that I am a Christian, and I will not turn from it. I will tell all of those who will listen of my new life. For old things have passed away, and all things have become new to me today. If you're sick and afflicted, believe right now. Just raise your hand and say, Lord, I need a healing. I need a healing. Touch me, please. I believe in your healing power. I believe by the stripes that were placed upon your body that I can be healed, and I will walk in healing. Yes. Father God, I pray that you would help me with my finances, that I would be wise. And the first step of, of knowing that I'm a Christian, I'm going to step out in faith, and I'm going to follow your word of how I should handle my money. And if I don't know, I will find a way to handle my money. My first fruits of giving will be to you to see your power direct my finances. Father, today I accept my part in this new generation that shall declare your word in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Tune in next week as well, but also on Wednesday night as we do a Bible study. We encourage you to be a part of us. Hopefully we'll all be together again soon as the Lord heals our nation. God bless you.